Welcome back to my mono game tutorial. This is part three. Uh, we're going to get started in just a second here. Um, so in this part, we're going to be handling uh, keyboard and mouse controls as well as controller and uh, a few other things. Uh, we're going to start off right away. We're going to be handling the uh, cursor first and foremost. Uh, so we're just going to add a texture 2D for the cursor. And then um, we're going to have a vector 2 to keep track of its position. We're just going to name that like cursor POS. And um, I went ahead and I uh, imported a texture ahead of time into the uh, mono game pipeline. It's just something I made in uh, Microsoft Paint. It's just a triangle. It should get the job done just fine. Um, and I'll show you right here. I also created a folder called UI and just suck it right in there. So there you have it. All right. So uh, now that we have the texture and the position, we can scroll on down to load content and we can just load up that texture right there. It's the same as the other one. So it's just equals content load, texture 2D, and then we give it the uh, location and name. All right, so now that we have the texture and we have something to keep track of the position, let's go on down to update so we can update the game as to where the cursor is. So we'll have to capture the mouse state. So mouse state, and then we'll just name it mouse state, but lowercase. Hope that's not confusing for anyone. Um, that's just kind of how I name things sometimes. All right, so equals uh, mouse, then dot get state. And I messed up, hold on a second. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little rusty with the, uh, the keyboard here. So apologies ahead of time. All right, there we go. Make it a method, semicolon. All right, so the cursor position is going to equal the position of the mouse, um, but we will have to scale it according to how big the window is. So dot position dot to vector two. Then we're going to do um, divide by scale, which we already covered the whole scaling thing in a previous part. All right, and now we're going to actually draw the cursor. Make sure you put it after everything else. It's going to be on the very uh, top of all the other images and textures there. So just sprite batch draw. Just add that there then just give it a position and then we can run the game. And you can see uh, what it looks like. All right, there we go. Of course, it's gonna give us the green squiggly line because it doesn't want us to do it that way, but it works fine all the same. And uh, there you go. Works like a charm. Keeps track of everything very nicely. All right, uh, it's looking a little small, so let me just show you. Uh, we can scale that a little bit. Very simple. Scale is a uh, new vector two. Then we'll increase the size by let's say 50%. So 1.5 and then F to make it a uh, float value. There we go. It looks a little nicer. All right, now, um, Right, let's handle the uh, the left and right mouse buttons, or just mouse buttons in general. So we're going to have a mouse state. We're going to put it outside all the other methods. Uh, and we're going to just call it um, previous mouse state. This is going to be really important because we have to keep track of what the last thing was that the mouse was doing. And uh, it, that'll become a, l a little more clear why we're doing that in a second. So. 
Let's go to our update method, uh, previous mouse state equals current mouse state. You want to put this right before the base.update. It's very important you put it after everything else. And now uh, let's do something for the uh, left mouse button. So mouse state, the lowercase one, dot left mouse button. And if it equals button state, and uh, it's a little different from from the gamepad, so it's uh, actually button state dot pressed. So if it's pressed and the previous time the game ran the update, if the previous time it was released, then that is a click. So it's important to keep track of the previous mouse state. Otherwise, if it's just keeping track of if it's pressed or not, it'll just kind of rapid fire based on um, the game's update speed. So you kind of don't want that. So that right there is a uh, click with the left mouse button. I'll just format that, make it nice and neat. All right, and um, the only thing uh, different is um, the uh, scroll wheel. The scroll wheel doesn't work exactly like a button. It has a value. So if the uh, scroll wheel value is above the value it was previously when the uh, game updated, I believe that is scrolling upward. Scroll. So it's a... Uh, if it's higher, that is scrolling upward. So we'll just add a little uh, note there real quick. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to uh, handling the uh, mouse and cursor. And so now we're gonna handle keyboard input, but we're also at the same time going to be handling custom controls. So you can have the user have uh, one key or one button on the gamepad. One key could have multiple actions or multiple actions can be on multiple different keys or buttons. And so for that, we're going to have some public strings. We're, we're just going to be using the, uh, the Q, W, E, and R keys for this demonstration. Of course, if you want to utilize the whole keyboard, you're going to have to be typing a lot more stuff here. And now uh, we're going to have some just default values, and these are going to be the default controls. So if the user has not customized anything thus far. And uh, just make sure you include what the key actually is within this string, and then you can have a slash or a dash, or you can have whatever you want, and then whatever in-game action you want that key to perform. And uh, including what the key is in the string is important just for uh, button prompts, like on-screen button prompts, pretty much. All right, yeah, let's just make this one attack. I'm just thinking on the fly of just generic in-game actions that the player could possibly do. So run, jump, attack, we'll just have this be special, whatever special means. All right, now that that is established, I think that's all we need for those. Again, this is just a demonstration. You probably want your user or player to uh, be able to utilize, you know, the whole keyboard, but Anyways, uh, we're going to create a new string here, and it's going to be called commands. And this is going to be keeping track of everything the player is telling the game to do. Just going to give it a default of string.empty. And uh, we're going to have an if statement. Let's see. Key state. Dot is key down, a little different from the uh, button state dot pressed we used with the uh, mouse. So key, let's handle Q first. 
So if Q is being pressed, commands dot plus equal is whatever is assigned to the Q key. And we can just copy paste that for the, uh, the rest of them right there. Now I'm pretty sure you cannot use a switch with something like this, nor would you want to in case the user is pressing multiple buttons at once. So unfortunately you're going to have a lot of uh, if statements because there's a lot of possibilities that can be happening right here. So let's see. Uh, let's just also establish the uh, gamepad state right here. I know it seems like we're going a little back and forth, but there's a, there's a rhyme and reason to this. It's because we're going to be handling some movement stuff in a moment. And we firstly need to uh, get the uh, gamepad state. And this once again works a little different from keyboard because you can handle multiple gamepads at once. So get state, and then we're going to specify that it is a um, it is the first player. So player index, I think it's just dot one. Yeah, you can have up to four players. All right. So now let's get into the movement a little bit. So let's see vector two. Then movement equals and then we're going to get the value from the left analog stick pretty straightforward pretty much just follow intellisense and figure out what's going on so thumbsticks dot left and x and because it's vector two we're also going to give it the uh, y value All right, so now that the uh, stick input is done with, you can go ahead and take care of the uh, arrow keys. So we're gonna, for this example, make it so you can use either the uh, thumbstick or the arrow keys on the keyboard. We're gonna go and uh, you know, do up, down, left, right. So keys down, keys dot right. And I know we did technically do this before and we're kind of redoing it, but I want to sh show everything. So we're going to have the, uh, the movement. We're going to have it uh, equal one or the uh, movement.x equal one, that is for the right. So we're just gonna copy paste that and uh, do the other three. So left is gonna be x minus one. We're also gonna use uh, else if statements just so they're not pressing you know left and right at the same time or up and down at the same time. So uh, just minus. And uh, up and down are going to be the uh, Y coordinate. Now, I'm not sure why I put this in my notes. Uh, I remember it was important for some reason, but I made I made it so uh, the Ys are reversed. So we're going to do keys dot down. So going down is actually plus one, but we're going to make it minus one and then it's going to be flipped back over again. Again, I this was important for something and I don't recall why, so if you want, you can ignore that. And then when we uh, handle it down here, um, you can just do the opposite of what I do. So now that we've uh, taken care of the movement with the uh, arrow keys, we can do a uh, player position. And it's uh, going to be a little different from what we did in the uh, previous part. As you can see, the uh, player position is highlighted right there. It's not going to be quite 
just movement speed. Uh, we're going to do plus equals, and then it's going to be the movement, and then it's going to be times movement speed. And the uh, movement speed is, of course, uh, affected by how much time has passed, just to give it a uh, time factor right there. And again, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. This is how I do it. It works fine for me. We're also just going to comment out that previous line so we're not getting anything weird going on. And uh, this is actually going to be, we're going to handle that X and uh, the Y separately. So it's going to be player position dot X plus equal movement X. And then it's going to be player position Y. Then it's going to be minus equals movement dot y. So again, I don't recall why I did it this way. I think it has something to do with um, screen scrolling. Uh, we'll be handling that eventually. Uh, but let's see how this works. And uh, it works just fine. Up is up, down is down, left is left, and right is right. Works very smoothly. Uh, you might notice that going diagonally you move a little faster than going in just one of the four directions. Uh, we will be fixing that shortly. It took a long time for me to figure out uh, exactly what to do, um, but I, I did figure it out eventually. All right, so what's next? Um handles uh, the commands. Yeah, this this will give you a better idea of um, the commands right here. So if commands contains, and then we're going to give it an action. So you can press any button that this action is assigned to. So for example, attack. We'll just label those real quick. Attack action. And so again, any button you press where attack is assigned, it could be any button and it'll do whatever it is you do in your game. We'll just have another one for jump, just as an example there. And uh, we're gonna go back to the top and we're gonna keep track of previous commands. So it's gonna be a public string So it's going to be previous commands, and uh, we don't really have to uh, assign anything to this by default, because, well, we, we, we don't really want it to have anything in there. So again, just like with the uh, mouse clicks, we want to know what happened previously. So if you, for example, press attack, you don't have, you know, an attack happening every time the game updates. We're just going to put that right next to a mouse state right there. So attacks, we don't want it to be spammed. You know, you press the button once, you attack once. So if commands contains attack, and we're going to use the exclamation mark to indicate not. So if it has attack and previously you did not have the attack command, then you can attack. And uh, the same would be true for jump. However, if you have like a run button that you want to hold down, you don't want to do previous commands. That doesn't matter because it's holding down a button. Hopefully I'm explaining this all uh, correctly. Uh, Let's go ahead and actually program the movement right here. So movement speed, it's going to be times equals 10% uh, probably is not enough. Yeah, there we go, 50%. All right, and so you can actually see I move at a certain pace and then I speed up suddenly when I press the button. Again, diagonally is a lot faster, we'll fix that shortly. 
So this this method I'm showing you here on how to have like customized uh, controls. This is my personal method. I found that this works uh, quite well in the uh, the games that I've made. Um, I looked all over the internet and I couldn't really find any tutorials on how to do this at all. So maybe other programmers do it the same way. They might do it a completely different way. But um, I assure you this works perfectly fine. So um, yeah, let's just continue. We're going to do the same thing we did with the keys except with the gamepad. We're just going to use uh, BTN instead of key, of course. So the A, B, X, Y buttons. Of course, the same thing applies for like the shoulder buttons and the triggers. And we just want to indicate what they are. So we can have button prompts on screen if we want. We're just kind of repeating ourselves a little bit here. Run jump attack special. And uh, we can pretty much repeat the same thing. We're going to do something. Uh, a little extra just in case um, obviously if they're on a computer they're gonna have a keyboard right um, but if they're possibly gonna use a gamepad but might not uh, we're just gonna put a little safeguard here just in case so if gamepad um, gamepad state is connected so yeah we're just gonna make sure the gamepad is actually connected before we um, check any of this stuff right here. All right, and then I think we can just do the same thing as all the keys right here. I, I do have a bunch of notes written out, so if I pause for a little bit, that's just me looking at my uh, notes because I want to make sure I thoroughly cover everything and I don't forget something and all the syntax is correct. So uh, yeah. A gamepad state is buttoned down. Then let's just do A. So when you press the A button, you add to the list of commands, whatever is assigned to the A button. So plus equals, and the plus equals is so when you press multiple buttons, everything gets added to the command list. And the command list gets cleared uh, every time the game updates. All right, now that that's taken care of, uh, there's just a little something else. Um, we have the D-pad of course so we're gonna make it so you can move with the arrow keys you can move with the d-pad you can move with the analog stick all right so with that there's i think one final thing i want to do which is show you how to normalize the direction. So if you're testing out what we have so far, uh, you'll notice that moving diagonally with the analog stick and moving diagonally with the D-pad, uh, you will go at different speeds. So we're going to have this right here. So if absolute value of movement X is more than 0 0.5, that's, that's the threshold that I like using. Uh, you can fiddle around with it if you'd like. And math dot absolute value of let's say uh, movement dot y, and same thing if it's more than five, and it has to be absolute value in case it's you know you're going in a direction in which it's minus. We're gonna do movement dot normalize, which is something it took me a little while to discover. Uh, dot normalize, but uh, this makes it so the D-pad and the thumb six, uh, they move at the same speed.
So we're just going to test that out real quick. And that should be the end of the video. Um, also, <laughs> make sure you put this uh, before you actually move. Otherwise, it's obviously not going to work. So put it right before uh, player position movement right there. All right, let's give it a try. I also uh, opened up fraps off, off screen so you can see what the frame rate is. It works very smoothly. Uh, so yeah, here I'm moving with the analog stick. I'm moving with the D-pad. And you can see uh, it, it works very well. You can even do precise movements on the analog stick. You can see I'm moving very slowly. And uh, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, next time, I think we're going to be covering uh, having different scenes in your game. So you go from one area to the next. You load the assets for that area. When you leave that area, it unloads the assets to uh, save memory so you don't have a really bloated program. Uh, we're going to be handling that in the next part. So I'll see you all then.